Hi folks, from the tie to your table and I'm Dan. Get ready to see Chef Mike prepare our yellowfin tuna caught from the midshore haunts near the Reeser and Atlantic Princess areas this summer. New Jersey meets Hawaii, poke style. Hi folks, this is Chef Michael Smith with another cooking segment from the Tide to your table. So we had a really positive uh, tuna fishing season. We caught some nice blue fins, some nice yellow fins. And this is some of the tuna that we had left over. So I thought I'd take a little time today and show you a very simple recipe, which happens to be one of the, my favorite things to eat in all of the world. So this is some yellow fin tuna that we took up and we diced up, as you can see, in cubes that are about a half an inch. Pretty simple to do. The only thing you want to make sure to pay attention to is sometimes, like this piece, uh, there's a little bit of sinew. Let me see if I can find one. I think I did a pretty good job of cleaning it off. But you want to make sure to get rid of that because that is unpleasant and a little bit tough to eat. Okay? So this is about a pound and a half of diced yellowfin tuna. Simple as that. So we're just going to add a few simple ingredients to it and turn it into just a wonderful, wonderful either appetizer, entree, sharing plate, or tapas. So the first thing we're going to do is ginger. Now, I pre-prepared some ginger, but I want to show you a little trick about ginger because when I was growing up in the restaurant business, my dad had five restaurants, and it was all about waste, controlling waste. And so many people take ginger, and they'll just take a vegetable peeler to it, or they'll worse yet, they'll take a knife and take way too much of the ginger off. All you need to chop ginger, excuse me, clear ginger, is a spoon. And you just take the back of a spoon, and you just draw it. And all that does is take the skin off, you see that? And it's ready to go. Great tip, makes you, makes you buy a lot less ginger. So what we're gonna do to this pound and a half of tuna is we're gonna take some minced ginger. This is about two tablespoons and just throw it in there, okay? Then we're gonna add a little bit of sambal. Now, this is sambal, which is Malaysian chili garlic paste. It's Pretty spicy, but very flavorful. We already talked about the fact that I'm a garlicaholic. So this is a great combination of both garlic and chili. Now, I know everybody's gonna wanna know exactly how much to put in. If you like hot food, put a little bit more in. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon and a half in there. That simple. And we're gonna take some chopped scallions. This is a bunch of chopped scallions. We're gonna add that in. And we're going to take low sodium soy sauce. And I got, a lot of this, again, is to taste. I will post a recipe for you above, but it really comes down to your, your own personal taste. So I'm probably putting in here about three tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce. Then we want to take roasted sesame, so, excuse me, roasted sesame oil. You can buy roasted sesame oil with infused chili, but I like to control it more with the sambal, the heat, than relying on the oil. You want to keep this once you buy it refrigerated because otherwise it does go rancid pretty quick. And again, we're going to put about three tablespoons or so of this oil into the poke. It's spelled P-O-K-E. So many people pronounce it poke. It's not poke. It's poke. And we're just going to stir this around until all of the tuna gets nicely coated. Okay. And we're going to put it in the fridge for about a half an hour or so to chill until we're ready to serve. There's a lot of different ways that you can serve this. So I'm just going to go over a couple of variables. So the first way is just as a simple appetizer. You can put them on a platter or serve them by the piece. And all we do is take wonton skins. You can buy them in any grocery store. Believe it or not, most of the time they're in the produce aisle. 
and just shallow fry them till they're crisp. Then you put it in a bowl or a little serving dish. You just take a little bit of this poke and put it on top. Okay. And then what I've done is taken some scallions here and I've taken the greens and just shredded them and put them in some ice water. What that does is that makes it kind of curl up for you for a beautiful garnish. So we're just going to take a little bit of that. We're going to damp it off. We're going to put that on top. And then lastly, we'll take a little bit of seaweed feriyaki seasoning. So feriyaki seasoning is sesame seeds, both black sesame seeds and white sesame seeds, and dried seaweed. You could just use sesame seeds by themselves that are toasted. And we'll just sprinkle a little bit on that. And what I like to do is just take a dab of sambal and put that right on top. And you have a beautiful single portion as an appetizer or a tapas bar plate ready to go. Another way to do that is to take these Asian spoons that you see in any Asian shop, take a little bit of your poke, put it in there, do it three times over. Now, I like my poke about a half an inch. However, some people prefer it to be a little bit finer. Whatever you and your guests will enjoy more, that's how big you cut it, okay? It's that simple. Not to be selfish, but it's all about you and your table. So then we'll put that down, take a little bit of the feriyaki seasoning, and it's okay if some spills over, it kind of looks cool. We'll take a little bit of the frizzled leaf, or the, excuse me, the, uh, the scallions. Dab them dry. And then we'll just take a little bit of wasabi mixed with mayonnaise, which I pre-did. Put it in a squirt bottle, make sure it's at the very end. And in this case, we'll just drizzle a little bit of the wasabi on top. Okay. And then again, if you'd like, you take a little bit of the sound ball and use even the back end of your spoon on top. This is great for an appetizer or a cocktail party. And there you have it. And if you do make a spill, all you do is just dab it off and you're ready to serve. Another great way to serve this is in a mini champagne glass or in a full size champagne glass. So what I add to that is a little pre-made seaweed salad in the bottom of the glass. And we'll scoop some of this poke right on top of that. So we're trying to give you as many options as you can. This is another great recipe you can actually do on the boat. Although when it comes to catching tuna, I just uh, tend to flay one up and bury it in the ice for a half an hour or and have, have at it. So a little feriyaki seasoning, some more of the scallions, and again, a little bit of sambal. Now with this, you could also take one of your wonton skins and just kind of break it up, stick it in the side. It gives them a little bit of a cracker to eat from. So there you have it, folks. Three simple presentations with yellowfin poke. Again, you can chop it a little bit finer if you like, whatever you you like for your table. You can garnish it with any number of things. More heat if you like heat. If your family likes heat, more sambal. You can use the chili oil if you'd prefer that. And you have a beautiful bar tapas, cocktail reception plate, or even an entree or an appetizer. So this has been Chef Michael Smith 
with from the tide to your table. Be safe out there. We'll see you on the water.